God's love for you goes on and on. When other hearts have failed, this love forgave from Calvary's cross. Where that love was named, you must believe He wants the best. Faith arise as I give you words I know. Well, I know there's a God. here at the Zoe Radio Network. Today we're concluding a reading of Dr. John G. Lake's sermon entitled Consecration, Testing, Power, and Victory. Previously, we looked at the fact Dr. Lake stated that Jesus, we forget that he was a man like other men and that he went through a test in the wilderness where he lived out the will of God, that he had learned from the Spirit and the Word, that Jesus entered into the will of God by just the same way that we do. Two phases to entering the will of God. And he came out victorious. And so today, I want to do a little review of... um, those wilderness testings, reading from Dr. Lake here under the section, The Extent of Jesus' Dedication. We covered that a couple programs ago. But I want to go over it again today just as a refresher as we get ready to go into the concluding uh, portion today, the result of the wilderness testing. The Extent of Jesus' Dedication. If you are questioning the extent to which Jesus dedicated himself, you can see the fullness of it in the story of his temptation in the wilderness. Satan tempted him in the three departments of his life. First, in the physical. Second, in the psychological. And third, in the spiritual. First, he tempted him to turn the stones into bread for the satisfaction of his physical needs. Then he attempted him to get the acclaim of the multitude. A lot of preachers are still doing that. Satan set him on the pinnacle of the temple, told him to cast himself down. A psychological temptation in the realm of the soul. The third was a spiritual temptation. Satan took him up into the exceeding high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and said, All these things will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. By a spiritual flesh, one of the marvels of the Spirit, Jesus, is permitted to view all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them in a moment of time. He did not let his imagination travel out, but he saw them in their magnificence and wonder and glory. And Satan said, all these things will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus had been dedicated and his soul, his body and his soul likewise to God, not to anybody else. He was utterly given up 
to God, he went through that awful testing. Supposing he had weakened. Supposing he had gone off and bought a box of pills. He would have been a blemished lamb. Just once would have rendered his consecration valueless. When he went into the wilderness, he had the spirit. But after he went through the testing, the spirit had him. Do you get it? A lot of folks have the spirit of God. Every child of God has the spirit in a degree. But after they have gone through with God, the spirit has them. Going on today now, with our concluding portion, the result of the wilderness testing. When he came out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit, when the Holy Ghost had him, body, soul, and spirit, every fiber of him, he was ready to go out and demonstrate what Christianity is. We read, Matthew 4.23 And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness among the people. Everybody wants to jump in and preach when we are willing to go through with Jesus in that getting ready process, then it will be with effectiveness, it will be with power, it will be with the love of God. Charles Parham was preaching in the state of Kansas. An old farmer was very interested and was all the time saying, oh, I wish the Lord would take all my farms and my cattle, and all my, and all my possessions, and let me preach the gospel. So one night, Parham got down to pray, and he prayed, Lord God in heaven, send a pestilence, and kill all the cattle. Let the lightnings come and burn up the sheep. And the man got up with a start and said, What are you praying that way for? Parham said, well, didn't you mean what you said? God bless you. We do not mean half of what we pray. But it finally dawned on that fellow's soul what a real consecration was. And one day he went out and used the finances in the gospel of Jesus Christ to get men's souls saved. He backed a dozen missionary boards. Years afterward, I was walking down the street of Johannesburg, South Africa, when a streetcar came along and something said to jump on. The first fellow I saw was this chap. He told me he had just taken a missionary party up to the Congo and settled them. And he remarked, planted there, is going on until Jesus comes and never stop. Wouldn't you like to plant something that would go on until Jesus comes that would bless mankind? One night in 1909, I was preaching in Los Angeles. And in the course of my address, I made the statement that I was located where conditions were such that I would guarantee a soul for every cent invested. I came on to Portland. I had gathered a party of eight that I wanted to take back to Africa. I had money enough for my own personal expenses, but not enough for them. One night, I knelt by my bed and prayed, Lord, I have labored these six months. And these eight people are ready to go back with me. And I believe every one of them is truly called of God. I haven't a cent to take them. Now it's up to you. I got into bed feeling that I had been heard. 
four or five nights afterward, the night before my meeting closed, I came in about 2 a.m. and found a letter from George B. Studd. Been a windfall in your favor today. A friend of yours came in and asked that her identity be not revealed, and she said, This is for Lake of South Africa. She left a draft for $3,000. I have $5 of my own I am putting with it. I took my party back to Africa. I felt that money was a challenge to the thing that I had said, that I would present a saved soul for every cent invested. That would mean 300000 saved to tell you that there are 50,000 now. How many souls will that $3,000 produce if the Lord tarries for 50 years more? God showed me the value of souls. I was manager of agents for a life insurance company. I received 80% flat on the first premiums. 20 or 30 minutes with a man might mean a commission of many hundreds of dollars. But God baptized me in the Holy Ghost and I went back to my office at the end of 30 days and I never had such a time to talk insurance to a man. The Holy Ghost kept saying, how about his soul? After a little bit, I had to stop and say, Brother, are you a Christian? If not, kneel down. I would kneel down and start to pray. And I saw them come to God every day for six months. But oh, I forgot the insurance. And the company was paying me to get insurance. I said, this has gotten to be such a battle. It is either God and souls now or it is business. I fought that for six months. At the end, the Lord won. First, give yourself to God, body, soul, and spirit, your money, and everything else with it. It did for Jesus, and it did for me. The foxes, have holes, and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head, said Jesus. When on the African mission fields, my wife, seven children, and I sat down a hundred times when we did not have a thing but cornmeal mush and sometimes did not have salt to put on it. Yet I preach three or four times a day and minister to the sick continuously. My heart is hungry for that now. I would say, goodbye to your pumpkin pie and everything else and go back to mush if I could have the same victory for Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you. What words, Lord? A vision, what a challenge. What a consecration. What testings, what power and what victory Dr. Lake experienced. Father, let us not just marvel at his life, but let us walk in his footsteps. Paul wrote many times, follow me as I follow in the Lord. Help us to do that. Help those who are hearing this message and appreciate and value the ministry of Dr. Lake to do that. 
so that he isn't just another preacher to us. He isn't just another person that is edifying and building us up in our own personal lives with the great things that you reveal to him. But Father, that we would follow him in example. As he said over here, when Jesus came out of the wilderness, he went forth and demonstrated what Christianity really is. He went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness among the people. Father, help us to go through the getting ready process. Facing those three temptations, physical, spiritual, psychological. Oh, Father, our egos, our flesh, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, Father. Thank you. Those that hear his words receive an impartation, a motivation, and a consecration. And Father, I thank you for it this day. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, he's with you right now unseen but with you he wants to come into your heart he wants to be a friend that sticks closer than a brother he wants to be your savior restore and build your relationship with God he wants to reveal himself to you he wants to be your healer your deliverer no matter what you're bound by know what illness, no matter what illness you may have, he's been raised from the dead and he is now a possessor of resurrection power. And that resurrection power that overcame death is greater than anything that you may be bound by or afflicted by. He wants to reveal that power to you. He wants to help you tap into it so you can be his free man while you're still on this earth. Just pray this with me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you came into the world. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead and that you are alive today in that unseen realm. I believe that you're with me right now. I open my heart to you, Lord. Come into me. Give me new life. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse my heart. Give me a new heart. Create in me a clean heart and a right spirit. Help me to walk in your footsteps. I thank you that you've heard me, Lord. You said whoever calls upon me will be saved. And I've called upon you. And I believe that you have saved me now. Thank you, Lord, for cleansing me of my sins. Thank you for taking me as your child. Now I want to be your disciple and consecrate myself to you in in your name I pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. If you've received the Lord today, I just encourage you to write me at Ann Windsor 8, number 8, A-N-N W-I-N-D-S-O-R 8 at gmail.com I'd like to encourage you in the Lord, maybe email you some materials that will help you to get started in your studies. Also, I just would encourage all of you to go to my online Bible school site. It's annwindsorbibleschool.org. And there I am concentrating primarily on spiritual things, pneumatology. Dr. Lake said every university needed a chair of pneumatology. So I am focusing on my... Bible School website primarily on spiritual things, the 
spiritual realm, spiritual realities, how the spiritual world functions, spiritual mechanics, God the spirit, man the spirit, Satan the spirit, new creation realities, the new creation woman, divine healing. Other things. Romans 8, 2, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Sharing the things that God has taught me that I have lived over the years. And today, I just celebrated my 69th birthday a couple of days ago. My husband is 75, and we are living the life that is more abundant. Hallelujah. And we want to teach you how to do it, too. God bless you all for tuning in today. Hope you have enjoyed this three-part series on Dr. Lake's sermon, Consecration, Testing, Power, and Victory. God's love for you goes on and on. What other hearts have failed? This love forgave from Calvary's cross. I give you words I 